I'm Deborah Johnson, school psychologist with the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education. Today I'd like to talk to you about brain health. Your brain is responsible and correlated with the function of your mental facilities and also with aspects of your physical health. The brain is responsible for everything that we do in our life. And it's no, no surprise that we're seeing more and more coverage in the media about the importance of achieving good brain health. So looking at what we can do right now to help ourselves, experts recommend that first and foremost, we consider our diet. We really should be moving towards a Mediterranean style of eating. Uh, meaning that we include more plant-based foods or we include more healthy fats, more fish and omega-3s into our meal plans. And we omit ultra-processed foods, trans fats, sugar, and alcoholic beverages. Now, I know many of us enjoy our glass of wine or our mixed drinks when we are socializing. I believe that we need to make critical decisions when it comes to our alcoholic beverages. And we have to make personal decisions whether or not we want to reduce or completely eliminate alcohol from our lives. Um, If we are heavy drinkers, it's important that we consider at least reducing alcohol consumption because all of these things uh, contribute to uh, risk of dementia as we get older and we need to be aware of that. Another thing you want to consider is how much physical activity am I engaging in on a regular basis and how much mental activity or mental exercises am I engaging in? I think all of us understand what physical activity looks like, but a mental exercise would be something like yoga practice, meditation, or even some of these mindfulness exercises that we've discussed in this series. You also want to make sure that you're getting a healthy amount of quality sleep each night. And I don't mean interrupted sleep, three hours down, 20 minutes up, three hours down. We want to get consecutively seven to eight hours nightly of deep sleep. And if you're not able to do that, if you have sleep difficulties, sleep apnea, you need to speak with your medical professional. It's that crucial. We also want to consider brain injury and avoidance of brain injury. Um, Use your common sense, wear that helmet when you're bike riding or watch for slip and fall risk. Another healthy endeavor is to adopt this lifelong learner attitude, meaning that you want to each day do something a little different or discover something a little different than what you usually are exposed to in your daily routines. So for example, maybe you engage in something artistic or creative. Maybe you're building something. Maybe you're completing some uh, brain puzzles or even a jigsaw puzzle that really kind of stimulates that cognitive processing in a different way than what you're accustomed to. If you're a reader, pick up something positive and inspirational to read and do as much reading as you possibly can. That's a wonderful brain exercise. And finally, Stay socially connected and involved, especially if you are an individual that lives by yourself. We as human beings need that connection and that interaction with other humans. We need to enjoy those thoughtful conversations or those joyful times where we have and enjoy laughter with each other. Um, Pursue your family and your loved ones and your friends for social events and and for get-togethers. This is very healthy for brain function as well. So this is a short list and a few suggestions that you might consider implementing into your lifestyle. I hope that you do give brain health some consideration and I hope that this inspires you to do things in your life that will benefit you well into your older seasoned years. Until we see each other again, take care of yourselves, be healthy and keep brain health in mind.